now we all know how to work with redux thunk middleware and work with apis using this application we use the redux thunk middleware to make the api call when we click on the action i'm going to post the data in the api and get the response from that api now once we get the response from the api let me show you how to print that in your application so let me just back to my visual studio code editor and here you could notice i have here a console statement inside that i have here to do's variable inside this to do's i have this state object inside this object we have error loading and to do's array inside this to do's right now i don't have anything but when i click on this change action i'm going to have a value inside this to do's you can notice here inside this to do's i have one to do with title body user id and id i'm going to post this data in the api and get the response back from the api and then i'm going to store that data in the store what i want i want to get this data from the store and display that right here in my application so what i'm going to do is just out of this title i'm going to print all that data i'm going to simply first create here a division tag and inside that i'm going to create h3 heading tag inside this h3 heading tag as you know we have here a variable called to do's i'm going to just call that here and inside that as you can notice here i have to do's key now let me just change the variable name here instead of to do's i'm going to say here container that will make sense let me just change this container let me just change the variable name and inside this variable i have a state and inside that i have to do's key inside this to do's on zero index i have to do key so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just iterate over this to do's using map function and display all this data so just here i'm going to call a method of array which is map this function is going to iterate over an array so here inside this parenthesis i'm going to pass a callback function here and inside this callback function i'm going to pass parameter so for now i'm going to specify here t for to do's and inside this function i'm going to say span and inside this span tag right here inside this curly braces i'm going to say t dot to do dot title as you can notice here inside this array i have this to do key and i'm going to access this title key value let me save the changes back to my browser oops i'm not going to get anything here because we need to return this value instead of just specifying that inside this function so instead of this curly braces i'm going to pass here parenthesis just like this as you can notice i'm going to have here foo as a response in the console you will notice i'm going to have here a warning each child in the list should have unique key you all know how to work with this warning because in the previous lectures we understand how to solve this warning let me refresh that again and show you how you can solve this warning so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just grab this curly braces right from here cut that and paste that just after this h2 heading tag right here and inside this right here i'm going to create this div and h3 heading tag and inside this function right here i'm going to get rid of this span tag and use my division and h3 heading tag so inside this map function right here i'm going to create a division tag and inside this i'm going to create h3 heading tag and what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify key to this division tag and i'm going to specify curly braces here inside this curly braces i'm going to get the index value of this to do you can notice here inside your to do's you will get this index value this is right now zero i'm going to pass this value right here so as a second argument to this map here i'm going to specify i i for index you can specify any name to both these parameters that's upon you inside this key as a value i'm going to specify i the index value to uniquely identify this division tag and inside this h3 heading tag here i'm going to pass curly braces specify t for to do's and then i'm going to say to do dot title and reload my browser just out of that when i click on this change action you can notice i'm not going to get any warning here i'm going to get response what i want now instead of iterating over this array inside of this return statement you can create a function for that or you can create a variable and return all the values of your jsx to that variable and print that variable for a practice put this statement inside a separate component and call that component here and print all your api values now let me show you how you can create a variable and store all your jsx value inside it and using that variable i'm going to print all my data let me show you what i want to say at the top before this return statement here i'm going to create a variable call constant list items is equal to 
and then I'm going to pass this statement just like this instead of this curly braces and just out of that this statement is going to return this title with this division tag and then what we need to do is we need to just copy this variable and inside this curly braces you need to just print that variable Clear out the browser and try to click on the action button so this is easy approach to get the value from the array just for that if you want you can get the different values of your to do inside this division tag for example if i want to get the value of body i can just simply specify here body key then if i want to get the value of id i can specify here id back to my browser and as you can see i'm going to have the title body and the id of the to do list so this variable is going to hold all these values and print that in the JSX. Now, if you want, you can style all this section using CSS file. For example, let's say you want to center this title. You can simply create a CSS file for that. Let me import the CSS file here. I'm going to say import. In the single quote, I'm going to specify double dot forward slash and then I'm going to specify app.css. I'm going to import this app.css file. We already have this file in this project. I'm going to use that here and inside this file I have a few classes. I'm going to use this app class inside my project. Here I'm going to say class name is equal to and in the double quote I'm going to say here app. As you can see this will just center this to do Redux application title. So if you want you can style your application using the CSS file or you can create a dedicated file for this component and style your application. Now I hope you understand how basically the Redux application works. Next, we're going to see how to work with the backend of the application. So in the next lecture, we'll start learning MongoDB database.